Right, the Sunday game was at Tynecastle, where Celtic knew they needed to keep up their recent blistering form if they were to have a chance of cutting back Rangers' lead at the top of the table. It's been a season-long struggle for Hearts, but they generally make it tough for the Glasgow side. And they went in front in the last league meeting thanks to Suso Santana. But a rare Chris Killen goal levelled the match. And Glenn Lofans won it deep into stoppage time. Better luck for Hearts in the Cooperative Insurance Cup tie where Samaras missed a host of chances. And Michael Stewart scored the winner from the spot to earn Shaba Laszlo's men a semi-final place. Obua and Kingston dropped out from the 0-0 draw with Dundee United. Boozied and Templeton started in what was a youthful home lineup. Tony Mowbray made a huge seven changes from the midweek Europa League encounter, reverting to the team which won at Motherwell last weekend. The highlights with Paul Mitchell. Crosshouse. It neatly to McDonald, filled by Kankawes. No free kick. And Gwemel. On to Robson. Robson with a mesh across. Samaras. Should have pulled it back to McDonald as Keller made the save. Well, Celtic have failed to score in two of the last three against Hearts, but an early chance here. Great cross in from Barry Robson. Should have been pulled back. Wallace. Loses out. So McGiddy picks up. McGiddy. Tracked by by Egger Jonsson. Still McGiddy. Samaras out wide on the left hand side. Rolled on to Samaras. Good save, Mario Kello. Pushes the ball onto the post. It's another good move from Celtic, though. No. McGiddy on to Samaras and Keller with a save. McGiddy on to Hinkle. They'll try and work the one two. Palace Willis will go with him. And Concarves concedes the corner. Involved very early in a McGiddy. Robson's corner. Hit off the post. Samaras! McDonald struck the woodwork. Samaras struck the net. 21 minutes gone at Tynecastle, and it's the visitors who have the lead. McDonald peeled away in the middle. He hit the woodwork. And Giorgio Samaras stood and waited for it. He scores for the first time against Hearts. Jonsson. It's a simple ball. Leuvens. Leuvens doesn't gather. Mo tries to go through. Was he brought down by Caldwell? The referee goes to the pocket. It's a straight red card and a penalty. Gary Caldwell, the chance to have taken down Jamie Mole, and the Celtic captain doesn't concur. Mole nipped in ahead of him. Caldwell wrapped his foot round, and Willie Collum says this is a red card and a penalty kick. Caldwell says no. Did he catch Mole first of the ball? Referee said it was Mole. Michael Stewart, the hero of the League Cup from the spot for Hearts. And he's the hero again this afternoon, his fourth penalty of the season. Five goals now for Hearts' top scorer, and he brings Hearts level. Dispatched it well, Boris went the wrong way. And here's the change, McManus for Krosas, and a reshuffle required. Stewart. Ball back on to Thompson, Robinson waits for it, hits off Leuvens. Robinson going in again with McManus. Fox gets the ball clear to the edge of the box. Celtic looks shaky. No concerns for Tony Mowbray. Wall and Robinson working hard again inside the box. Boric spreading himself. Celtic, three straight wins in the SPL. Going for another here at Tynecastle. McGeady running through. Good shot! Woodwork again, and Concalves will take it away from him. That's another terrific run and shot dispatched by Eden McGiddy. Marian Kello could do little. The post came to his rescue. Henko. And Calvez should gather that. Oh, McDonald's done well. McDonald should pull it back to Samaras. Somehow the man in form is scored in five straight games for Celtic. This presented to him the easiest of all chances. And Samaras off target. The fans behind the goal prepared to celebrate. 
and in the end it was simply despair for all concerned Thompson with a free kick doesn't beat the first man here comes Templeton who's impressed this afternoon away from Fortuny Templeton arrows it in and Ismail Buzid scores for Hearts with 14 minutes to go wonderful piece of play wide on the right hand side the cross was a dream the goal was a bullet header and the man who is about to get substituted scores for the first time for Hearts Ismail Buzid Samaras gets the break from Zaliukas. Good save by Kello. Thump cleared by Wallace. Fortuny watches it. And Celtic continue to be dangerous. Down to ten men. Losing by two goals to one. But they're still pushing. Lovely little ball through. Samaras too easily away from Zaliukas. And Kello strong with a hand. So Robson over the free kick. Robson floats it deep. Fortuny comes back into the middle. And Manny Ankello gathers. He may have struck the arm of Fortuny. Robson sent it across. Did come off the elbow then, the post. No free kick awarded. And Kello grabbed it before Samaras. Robson, Celtic continuing. Put the pressure on Hart. Robson swings it in. The hitter is going to be off the line by Thompson. The hitter from Leuvens. Scored against Hart's already this term. But no double joy this time. Got across his man, hit it goalward, Thompson on the post. 2 1 it was for Hart. Shabalazla does his version of the robot, it would seem. Big handshake with uh, Tony Mowbray, then another little celebration. You can understand the relief all rounds at Tyne Castle. It's the first home win since the end of September for Hart. Um, much needed, I've got to say, it didn't look like coming in the early stages. Celtic absolutely dominant and yep. it's not often Celtic go in front and then chuck it away. No, and I, I think you're absolutely right. They did chuck it away. The ordering off was costly. Um, slackness generally by Leuvens and Samaras in particular. Uh, having taken the lead at this stage, a simple goal of McDonald peeling off at the back post. He should probably have scored, but the ball falls to Samaras and he puts it away, even although he's in amongst a ruck of Hearts players. Uh, and at that stage, from what had gone before, you thought that Celtic were going to go on and win comfortably. But the game changed completely as soon as the ordering off occurred. Well, it, it was just an instant, wasn't it? And you're anticipating Glenn Lovins clearing here. He doesn't. And then suddenly the game changes. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I don't know whether he had switched off momentarily and thought McGeady wouldn't play it back to him. You'll see where Willie Collum is there. Uh, Willie, like everyone else, had presumably been anticipating Lovens would play the ball up the park. But fortunately, Willie was quick enough to react in the right position to judge that it was a penalty. And no doubt, when you see it like that, you think... I, I think that illustrates sometimes how difficult the referee's job can be. Because Gary Coggle is a whisker away from making yeah. a great tackle. But the replays clearly show that he plays the foot first and then the ball. Michael Stewart uh, doing it at Tynecastle, what he'd done at Celtic Park earlier in the season. A bit back more and efficiently. Left. Yeah, very efficiently. <laughs> um, this was interesting. Now, what we don't see is what happens here. There's a bit of a to and fro between Boozied's and the fans. Willie Collum has to um, interject at that stage. This is a situation you'll have been in many times, I guess. Sure. And if players are going to get themselves involved with the fans, then they can only expect the referee to take action because otherwise, eventually, the police become involved in these situations. Boozied was sent off only a couple of weeks ago for two yellow cards. Jabba Laszlo has come out in the papers today and said that he was well warned before the game. He only wanted them to defend and not to do anything else, particularly not get involved with fans. Well, he was about to be hooked. He yep. couldn't get the hook and then this. <laughs> yeah. It's a great delivery from Templeton, a magnificent cross. Um, and Boozied makes every effort to get there and gets his reward. And then he does get substituted, <laughs> as you say. Off he goes. And, and the words from Shabba Laszlo. And that's the kind of thing I guess you would encourage. Well, I think it's smart on the part of Shabba Laszlo. He recognises he's got a central defender who has picked up a caution. Whether it's a stupid one or otherwise doesn't matter. He realises his central defenders may be under pressure late in the game. And he wants them to continue to be able to make tackles. He doesn't want to run the risk of going down to 10 men. So he says, OK, I'll take you out of the heat of the action. 
In the end, a great win for Hearts, and as, as we said, against all the old Celtic, looked to be firing in all cylinders. Suddenly it's a defeat, suddenly they've got the deficit now. Um, we said earlier on, a testing time coming up for Rangers, for Hibernian, very much so for Celtic as well. They need to get back into it, don't they? Yeah, before Rangers went to Tannadice midweek, everyone was saying it was Rangers who were under pressure. The whole thing's turned in its head again. Rangers have this cushion. Admittedly, Rangers have to go to Easter Road this coming Sunday for what is a big, big game now. Um, but it seems to be that way every week in the Premier League at the moment, which is a good thing. It sure is. And